the razor's edge of innovation today reaches all the way to the front lines of operations. Using data-driven analytics, companies are optimizing key business processes at scale, improving performance, customer experience, and just about any other metric that can be measured. Find out more on this episode of Future Proof. The future is here already. It's just not evenly distributed. Yet. Today's world teams with innovation. The nexus of hardware, software, and human ingenuity promises a revolution in possibilities. What does tomorrow look like? Witness Future Proof. Yours truly, Eric Cavanaugh, is here with an all-star cast, folks. I'm really excited about the lineup today and the topic. So the topic today, a stitch in time, operational analytics, and how it helps, uh, well, basically how it helps fine-tune operations, quite frankly. So we're going to talk to several guests today. We've got my good buddy, Nick Jewell, on the line within quarter these days. My other friend, Shruti Bhatt from Rockset. And we've got a newbie in the show today, Naveen Sharma from another interesting company called Stardog, and they're all doing things in the space of operational analytics. So what does that mean, basically? Analytics, of course, is just analyzing data, trying to understand. There are many venerable players in the space of analytics, Teradata, of course, then we had a whole big data splurge with Cloudera and Hortonworks and MapR, and that kind of shrunk down a little bit. But now there is a whole renaissance of new analytic database engines that are launching left and right. There must be seven companies in the space right now, at least, doing some very interesting things. And the whole point is trying to be able to do analytics at the speed of the business. So instead of a sort of offline process where it's at the end of the week or the end of the month or something like that, where someone is analyzing, okay, what happened? How can we change things? No, with operational analytics, you're trying to understand what's happening right now and how can I solve this problem right this second? So think things like fraud detection, think manufacturing, where when there's a problem on the manufacturing line, I can tell you it's a very unpleasant experience. I learned years ago in a past life in the print production world, just talking to the press men who worked on the big machines that printed the newsletters and the magazines and so forth. And one guy explained to me, look, he goes, if those machines aren't running, we're not making money. <laughs> and so that's why we want those machines running all the time. So they really button down their processes leading up to the actual print job, right? And then they have a press viewing, you come down and make, take a look at it, make sure it's all working. If you give them a thumbs up, then you go back and do your job. Well, in the, in the manufacturing world, that's still the case today. So how can you get a view into the manufacturing world? Think about all the supply chain challenges that we have going on these days. It's really big money. It's very, very important. Uh, in the cloud, of course, any sort of customer facing solution that goes through the cloud, well, you got all these site reliability engineers who are working nonstop to solve issues like why are things going slowly? Why aren't these cards processing? Why aren't the orders going out the door? Well, I can tell you that troubleshooting has always been a challenge and it's especially challenging these days with what we call the modern data stack. So let's bring in our guests. I've got Nick Jewell dialing in all the way from the UK, I believe. We were joking about football. Of course, they have a different kind of football. On the rest of the world, America, we have to be different over here. But uh, and you've got some real-time analytics in football these days, too. But Nick, tell us a bit about yourself and Incorda and what you folks are doing in the world of operational analytics. Awesome. Yeah, thank you very much, Eric. Hey, everybody. I'm Nick Jewell. So I've been in the data and analytics space for around 25 years now. I started with a PhD in computer-aided drug design. I've been working in the industry both as a customer and a vendor for analytics software. So I've kind of really seen both sides of this journey. Um, right now, I'm heading up solutions marketing in Encorta's product team. So I get to spend a lot of time with customers, with prospects, and help shape the platform as it kind of develops into the future. Now, now that, as for Encorta, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. I was going to say, that's a really cool place to be, right? Because you're, you're sort of the interface, the liaison between the product team and the customers. And because you've been in the industry for a long time, you understand development cycles and customer needs and prioritization, all that stuff. So that sounds like a perfect job for you. Oh, it's absolutely brilliant. I mean, you do get to hear customers' dreams for the future. And, you know, if we do it right, we get to serve some of those up for them, which is great. <laughs> um, I'll tell you a little bit about Encorta. I mean, we're a bit of a disruptor in the analytics space. I think you could say we're the only vendor to be recognized in the Gartner Magic Quadrant for BI and analytics and their market guide for analytic query accelerators. Hmm. So it tells you a lot that we're all about delivering insights, but we're also about getting you there as quickly as possible. Now, we were talking in the pre-show about 
about Cool and different guests you've had on in the past, the founders of Incorta have got this extensive, phenomenal, really, experience in what's called the ERP and the CRM space. So they've been building business critical applications for decades. Now, for our listeners who might not have come across those terms, we're basically talking about software that runs some of the most important operational processes inside your company. Mm-hmm. And Encorta's mission is dedicated to solving the business applications data problem, where operational data gets captured in these transactional systems like Oracle's eBusiness Suite or NetSuite or SAP, and then that data really struggles to get into the hands of data analysts, data scientists, even financial controllers or accountants, so that they can use that data to make better decisions for the business. So to your point, whether that's optimizing a supply chain, whether that's targeting a customer segment, or whether it's simply getting to close the financial books days faster than before when you hit that month or quarter end. So I'll pause there, let the other guests introduce themselves. Thanks very much for having me on the show. Absolutely. We'll get right back to Nick in a second. And uh, next up, Shruti Bhatt from Rockset, one of these companies I've been talking about that's taken a different way. And you folks have a really interesting approach where, as I recall, if I recall correctly, you create, I think, three indices of data as it's streaming in. So the data is coming in and you're automatically creating these indices to be able to query the data and find the data. And, you know, discovery is such a huge part of the process, right? I mean, if you're a business analyst, if you're in the real world, you're trying to solve some problems, what do you do when you're asking questions of people and of systems, right? You're asking questions of the data. What's this? What's that? You kind of piece it together in your mind. So to have that that immediacy of analytical capability strikes me as really, really important and very compelling. So tell us a bit about yourself and what Rockset is doing. Thank you. First of all, thank you for having me on the show. And yes, we take a very different approach. So I've been at Rockset from the beginning, part of the founding team here. And, you know, a lot of our founding team came from Facebook. So completely different background saying, wait, if Facebook can build a personalized newsfeed for you in real time based on who your friends are, what they're commenting on, what they're liking, why can't your customer support operations team know in real time exactly what your customers are doing? Why can't your sales operations team know exactly which customer is having issues right now and needs proactive reach out versus which customer they should be reaching out right now um, to talk about you know a, a bigger discount or a bigger contract, right? This is really hard for the enterprise to do. And this is where Rockset comes in. Our approach, like you said, is converged indexing. So we build a converged index and the differentiator that Uh, we really focus on is how do you do this on streaming data? Hmm. So change data capture is all the rage today. If you have CDC streams coming from your Oracle, your Postgres, your MySQL, great. How do you take that in real time, join it across whatever other data sources you might have? And then the interesting part is, again, this is a shift we're saying, it's people building applications on this. You now, mm-hmm. Facebook Newsweek is a great example of a real-time analytics application. Once it becomes real-time, you don't have humans staring at dashboards anymore. Right. You have an application that comes and taps you on your shoulder and says, hey, something's off here. Go take a look at this particular thing. So our whole focus is on enabling these real-time data applications. So a simple way to explain Rockset is think of it as sub-second analytics. So sub-second search aggregation joins on real-time data. That's CDC streams, that's event streams coming from your different sources. Yeah, that's great stuff. And that also is another whole renaissance that I'm seeing, which is the next generation of apps, right? Snowflake talked about it at their event. Lots of other vendors are talking about this. And the idea is that we need apps that are driven by analytics or that are driven by AI, for example, which is a different kind of application. And traditionally applications go to a static database to get the pieces and parts that they need to come back and show you some view of the world. But because you're talking about this next generation, it's a different approach and you need a different engine. The old engines aren't gonna do very well with that use case, right? Exactly, and the two things that the old engines uh, struggle with one is really taking that data in real time. So again, you know, anybody who's tried to do this on a warehouse will tell you the the thing that breaks your warehouse is when you do too, you know, too many frequent updates. You don't want to do it. It's built for batch, do your nightly batch uploads and it'll do its best work. But for this kind of a use case, 
you can't have your customer support team looking at yesterday's data. You can have your, um, you know, ground crew operations for, uh, say, JetBlue looking at yesterday's data. They need the most recent data. So that's one thing all systems don't do. The second thing that all systems break, um, very typical, is the query latency. You know, if it's an analyst looking at a dashboard, doing quarter end analytics, sure, it can take a minute, no problem. But if it's an application, you know, you have a customer on hold trying to rebook their flight, that query better come back fast. Otherwise, you're going to have very angry customers, right? So the second thing that we differentiate from the older generation is these queries need to be fast. So we like to say it's fast analytics on fresh data. And that's very different from, um, well, slow queries on stale data. <laughs> that's right. Well, then, and that, that, uh, sets people's minds at rest, I think, you know, so you can focus on your job and not worry about things. It doesn't kind of hang over your head. Everyone knows what that's like. That's no fun. Well, we'll come back to Shruti in a minute too. Let's bring in Naveen Sharma for his opening statement. Naveen from Stardog. Tell us a bit about yourself. You got a knowledge graph going, right? That is correct. So uh, thanks for having me on the show. Again, my name is Naveen Sharma, the VP of product. I'm also responsible for our strategic alliances uh, <clears throat> with key technology partners. Um, so Stardog, yeah, just in terms of a background, um, uh, yeah. for me personally, I, I come from the, the similar stages as where, you know, Nick and others have been, which is 20, 25 years in the industry around data management. I grew up in the data quality, data integration, master data management domain, uh, totally get the, the idea of, um, enabling organizations to gain insights from the data, um, where we've always found this challenging as, as either practitioners or, or you know, uh, creatures of habit, we tend to think about the world in terms of um, how how we see things as business concepts. But unfortunately, in the way we model data and information today, it's it's really uh, held hostage to the underlying data storage infrastructure, hmm, that's and right. that problem tends to really really cause a lot of organizations uh, to you know not get the an uh, the analysis they need in time uh, more importantly they're also looking at the challenge of working with data that sits across data silos uh, that's a tendency we see many organizations continue to face even in this stage where a lot of the data is being brought into a data lake environment uh, or even into a lake house construct it's still lots of data perhaps separated by domain, if not storage infrastructure. And then we all know that not all data will actually land up in a data lake uh, eventually anyways, right? We talked about streaming data. We talked about certain applications like ERP operational systems. They'll tend to have the best source of freshest real-time information. So you don't really want to work off of snapshot. And the way I describe um, Stardog, much like uh, the way Shruti talked about, you know, f you know getting fast data, um, we, we talk about faster queries across wide data. So in this mm. world where you know we're we're constantly working with more and more uh, data data environments, uh, especially in a multi-cloud hybrid cloud environment, we're going to find that problem is just starting to compound more and more. Mm. And uh, even the, our best efforts in modernizing our data tech stack by bringing everything to a data lake is still still removes the actual users who need to consume this information in context of what problems they're trying to solve, right? So, you know, one of the benefits of what Stardog provides being an enterprise knowledge graph platform is that we're able to attach meaning to the data, uh, to the data itself through the semantic data model that comes at it from a consumer consuming application perspective mm. rather than the underlying data storage perspective. So, you know how we think about things as concepts, business mm -hmm. uh, suppliers, we think about customers, we think about products, we think, we think about inventory. And that's often how users uh, across various industries or various business functions think about the data, right? They don't think about it in terms of rows and columns. And that inflexibility where they have data trapped in these rows and columns makes it very harder for them to, to really make sense of the data and run it for the analytics purposes that need it. Uh, and that's where Stardog comes in, right? So we allow them to create this semantic data model that's abstracted away from the underlying data storage, hmm. right? And this can be meaningful to 
the, the, the analytics team that's working in a manufacturing context, right? So they want to understand the entire, you talked about the manufacturing case of looking across the entire supply chain and being able to represent that information in context of those business concepts and not worrying about how the data is stored, where it's stored, what location, what structure. Uh, and, and so that's the power of knowledge graphs is being able to separate out, abstract out the, uh, the, the, the desire for information, tying it to real world concepts that are more meaningful to the consumers and coming at it from a consumer perspective rather than a data producer perspective. And then we're you know, leaving the rest in terms of being able to connect to the systems regardless of where they are in this homogenized environment uh, where we can in turn translate a query from a citizen data user to the source itself and whether that source happens to be uh, somewhere at a delta table on databricks or whether that happens to be a table in snowflake or, or postgres we're able to uh, you know, our magic is, is really taking that query and translating those to optimize queries back at the source itself throw it back over to Nick Jewell from Encorda. And as I recall correctly, some of the magic of Encorda comes in the ability to really onload that data very, very quickly. You point at a target, just suck that data in, and you can do your analysis very quickly. That's half the challenge right there, right? Is getting the data into your environment and allowing you to do the correlation, the causation, all that kind of stuff, right, Nick? Yeah, it absolutely is. I mean, to align with Naveen and Shruti, their definitions were great around fast queries. I'd say in quarter is all about fast queries across complex business data, you know, environments that have often been underserved when it comes to analytics in the past. Um, something one of our founders loves to talk about is the fact that one size doesn't fit all with data as well so you might have the facebook or the netflix of the world dealing with hundreds of petabytes of data but that data is structured in a very specific way it's often capturing you know clickstream or it's capturing impressions or social likes that kind of stuff that can be held in very simple table formats can be sharded out across very very large clusters of compute and it's actually very very scalable when you get into those hundreds of petabytes However, when you're dealing with complex business data, it can only take a billion or two rows in this incredibly complex format where you have thousands of database tables, often hundreds of thousands of relationships between those tables to bring these kind of queries down. You try querying directly against one of these applications, it's a non-starter. Right. Even That's if you right. could work out where the data lives, you run the risk right. of a query that actually brings your system down. Right. Well, and that's a really, really good point. And you go back in time to remember where data warehousing came from. And it came from the awareness that these enterprise resource planning systems, the systems that run your business, basically, were not designed to be queried. They were designed for transactions. They were designed to be able to pull in information and make sure that Bob got his box and Susan got her box, et cetera. And those are complex challenges. I mean, building out ERP systems is very complex. and. We talked about that this morning. Again, one size does not fit all. That's why an SAP will have all these different modules, right? That they bring in there because the business models are very different. And you're dealing with, uh, with, with time series issues, like when will this get there? When will that get there? Think manufacturing. So they're not designed for that. So what do you have to do? You have to pull the data out and then do your analysis in some environment. Then you discover things. Then you go back and you change something in the systems, right? And, and you know what? This is the same data warehousing playbook we've been running for three decades now, and it causes enormous problems. The real problem is the plumbing itself, the architecture, mm -hmm. what needs to happen behind the scenes. It's incredibly complex. It's incredibly expensive. As you said at the beginning, the modern data stack has hundreds of different tools potentially to lift and shift and most crucially transform that data. So mm -hmm. there's the time needed to code and to test that business logic associated with the data movement. There's literally months of time to build reports and models off of the transformed data itself. Honestly, Eric, in short, it's pretty much like the worst car you ever owned. It's always breaking <laughs> down. It's, it's never getting you to where you need to be. It's That's always fine. costing serious bucks for maintenance, right? <laughs> No, that's a very that's a very interesting point too, and you know I'm I'm just trying to wrap my head around how to explain this to folks. Um, it is like fixing the car, right? And like not a lot of people can fix the car, so and, and we have to remember that we have all this. Well, some people call it technical debt, right? Really, it's just extant systems that are running operations, and and these days for big companies, especially, you have this long arc 
of very old systems, rather old systems, pretty old systems, old systems, relatively new systems, you this whole sort of spectrum of system technologies that run at different speeds. You, of course, have networks to, to network that stuff all together, but even the networking is changing. You've got software-defined networking. There are just all these different ways you can solve problems, but it, sooner or later, you have to get down to the source and change with either the architecture or the system itself, you're going to learn something, but you can't just continue to try to add more servers and you know bigger, fatter servers and things like that. Sooner or later, you have to change something fundamental about the business process itself, right? Yeah, you got it. So, I mean, what attracts customers, I think, to Encorta is that it really does have this fundamentally different take on the whole end-to-end -end process. So, we we posit the question: What if you could do? If you could run real-time analytics on raw business data, what if you could do that without pre-shaping or without pre-aggregation, just eliminating all of these overly complex data pipelines, which are full of choke points and delays? So. You, you appeal really to a CFO in a company. What if they want to put analytics on top of the company's general ledger across hundreds of these different tables mm -hmm. and they need to drill down into operating cycles or cash flow or take to the FP&A team, the financial planning and analytics team to understand why expenses are over budget for a particular division. Or it could even be, and I think Shruti, you touched on this a little, the diagnostic analysis, the fact that these data-driven applications run themselves and they flag up anomalies. Maybe in HR, you have people people leaders understanding whether or not they're hiring people enough to get over current attrition rates. So I think it's these areas of applied analytics on top of these operational data sources and these operational processes that customers see as a, a major differentiating factor uh, when they come to choosing Quarter as an analytics vendor. Yeah, that's a really good set of points you made right there. And it's actually a good segue to bring Shruti into it too. Because Rudy, really, I think what uh, Nick is trying to say here is that there are these areas in the organization where you need, in order to do your job properly, you need information from multiple sources and it's relatively unwieldy information in a lot of cases. So in, in all these examples, whether it's the knowledge graph or in quarters approach or you with the indices, there are different ways that you're trying to open up a sort of window into the world of what's actually happening and let people do this either troubleshooting or scenario modeling to be able to come up with ideas and to test those ideas before you push them into production. What do you think, Shruti? Absolutely. The, the fact that you know data now is in so many different places and so many different formats makes life hard for everyone, right? Mm -hmm. And I think we talked about, um, Nick touched on this when he said, you know, operational data, right? Operational databases have been around. Everybody thinks of the system of record as your operational database, your Oracle, your Postgres, your MySQL, whatever's behind your ERP, CRM system. But then those are not built for analytics. And yet, if you want any real-time queries, your only option is to try and hit your production database or create a read replica. Everybody knows how expensive it is to create Oracle read replicas. And then you have people creating a lot of different read replicas just because you don't want to put that analytical query onto your primary production database. Right. So this is where the new pattern is emerging. Um, why can't you do that in a warehouse? We talked about this, but then what's the other option now? You don't want to hit your production database. You don't want to go to your warehouse because it's too batchy. That's where this new world of you know, operational analytics and real-time analytics databases come into play. And what we're finding is this pattern is really around real-time change data capture. I think DynamoDB, MongoDB, the modern databases really got this right. They have this thing called a streams API. They'll give you CDC streams. Anybody can consume a change data capture stream. Every insert, every update, every delete is now streamed to you know, another database. And mm -hmm. Rockset consumes those streams natively, but then what happens when you have Postgres, Oracle, you have some other database? Well, you still need some way to capture the CDC streams. And once that comes into Rockset, what we're doing is giving you search aggregations and joins on top of that. But the interesting part is these are showing up now as JSON streams. We're talking mm -hmm. about JSON over the break. The CDC stream is coming from Debezium Kafka as a JSON stream. And then you have an event stream that's also coming as a JSON stream or an Avro stream through Kafka. So suddenly you have all the structured data in your you know, traditional operational databases in the form of structured SQL tables. 
but they're emitting change data capture streams in the form of JSON streams. And now on the destination side, you have to be able to take that in and somehow give your end users SQL search aggregations and joins on top of these streams. So this is uh, how we're approaching it with the converged index. We just take all these JSON streams, even if it's deeply nested JSON, and give you a fully typed, fully indexed SQL table. So you can now join against S3 and join against your Postgres database. Mm -hmm. And suddenly you're making sense of your world, but you're doing that you know, using standard SQL and you're doing it in real time. And I think um, it was um, Naveen who talked about the citizen um, analyst, right? That's really the crux of it. How do you give the power of this analytics insight to every person in every operations team? They shouldn't have to go, you know, wait for your batch nightly job to run. They should be able to ask the question as they think of it. And most of the times, again, in operations teams, they're not doing, you know, quarter over quarter, year over year. They're doing a lot of drill downs. Hey, what happened to that shipment? I didn't see it come through when I was expecting. Let me go look up that. Oh, what happened to that? Let me go right. look up a lot of drill downs and joins that you have to do in real that's, time. That's so how right. do you that's empower a, people? That's a fantastic example because again, if you're thinking about these use cases where something is being shipped, if you don't have a solution like this, you have to wait for some batch process to come into place before you're ever going to have visibility to that. And people know this. You're talking to someone on customer service. Okay, um, no, I don't see that yet. So we're just, you know, we don't see that in the system yet. Like, well, why not? It's because you have an older system that doesn't have this capability. And, you know, kind of to the point that it was a good uh, segue to bring Naveen back in too, to the point of having some sort of abstraction layer where you're pulling in all this information in real time and, and what... Uh, Shruti does with Rockset is to create this converged index where you've got multiple different indices, you converge them, and then you can query on that just as it happens. So think about when Google will go and sort of update its, its indices of websites. Well, if you're a news organization, you're constantly throwing content out there, they will dynamically search you more often. They'll figure out what is the rate of change on this website. And you'll get penalized if you don't if you do it a bunch and then stop doing it and then start doing it again you can kind of climb back up but i promise you there are algorithms that are tracking that all the time and uh, if, you, if you have to wait like a day or two or three days till something shows up that's not as exciting especially if you're trying to solve some problem in real time real quick shooting i'll bring in the beans. go ahead yes uh indexing is such a great example for both google and facebook it's the same thing like believe it or not 10 years ago Facebook's newsfeed was batch. At some point, you know, you would have to log in and look at it in the morning and it would stay the same till the end of the day. The minute they went to um, real time is when the engagement started happening. And it's a good analogy you think of Netflix and Facebook and what they're doing at petabyte scale. Well, if they can manage that, why can't we bring that to everybody, but without the cost and complexity, without having to hire, you know, thousands of people just to run your data systems, because that's not going to be affordable for everybody, right? So how do you make it accessible to every citizen uh, out there, but without the cost and complexity? That's, I think, the real challenge for um, all of us that we're trying to solve here. I love it, folks. We'll talk to you next week.